Hi, welcome to another episode of MYD Global. I'm your host, Leanne Hackman Carty. In today's episode, I speak with Eric Holdman. He's the director of the Center for Regional Disaster Resilience. He's also a senior fellow at the Emergency Management Magazine. In this episode, he's speaking with me about the importance of disaster resilience, but looking at it in the context of your region to look beyond your borders. So stay tuned as I talk to Eric about his vast experience in this area. Hi, Eric, how are you doing today? Great, thanks for having me on your program here. I look forward to chatting about regional issues. Yeah, so before we get started, can you tell the viewers just a little bit about yourself? Yeah, my background, um, yeah, I was a 20-year military officer, infantry, and then uh, transitioned into emergency management, and I spent five years at Washington State Emergency Management, 11 years as the director of emergency management for King County, that's the metro Seattle area, did a couple of years consulting, four years as a port security director, and now eight years as the director of the Center for Regional Disaster Resilience for a five-state, five-Canadian. Um, area. It's a statutory nonprofit, kind of a unicorn type organization here in the United yeah. States. Yeah. So when you say disaster resilience, how, how would you define that? Well, a lot of people use the term bounce back, um, be able to recover uh, quickly. And that, that's appropriate, but there's a lot of different aspects to uh, resilience. And uh, we're going to observe some of that in real time here with the current COVID uh, disaster as uh, I was just talking to someone if we did not have the internet capability we have today if this had happened in the year 2000 before we had email all the tools like zoom Microsoft meetings all that we couldn't have functioned as well as we have certainly the IT companies uh, if we didn't have these tools so our resilience has been aided by the digital re revolution that we've had it also then leads to other risk resilience is having you know less than one solution having other tricks in the bag to be at workarounds and we've seen a lot of cases really where we've become less resilient when you look at the supply chain right so um i know that one of your focuses at the, at your organization is about resilience but looking at it in a regional context so i'm curious about how how that works well regional means different things to different people. If you say regional to uh, a federal government official or agency, they're thinking multi-state. Uh, when you say regional within a state, uh, that can be defined differently. I, I think a region is one that shares a common population and a common business uh, base, and then it, it has to have a transportation network that also uh, functions well. Here, again, most familiar, I'm I am with Washington State here. In the Puget Sound region, there's uh, five or six counties that make up a central Puget Sound region. And that's got over, almost over half the state's population. There's 39 counties, but five or six of those have the majority of the population. It is the economic engine. So that, that region has to function every day for us to um, be resilient and, you know, be an economic driver like like we are. So I, I think it's not geographically based, it's you know the population, the business interests, interests and the transportation system uh, to support that. So if, if you're interested in becoming a resilient, a disaster resilient region, I would assume that would include looking at uh, structures that would almost, um, it's not forced, but, but a memorandums of understanding between different jurisdictions as to what we're going to work on together, how we're going to collaborate. Is that kind of what your organization does? Well, we do that. But, and, you know, for anybody looking to become more resilient, I would say look for your interdependencies um, that drive your function. You know, we, we don't generate our own electrical power, not many of us. Um, we need water, wastewater functions, uh, as we've seen here, the telecommunication piece of this, where are your interdependencies? And then work to provide workarounds to that. And in some cases, you know, a hospital will have generators, for instance. And, but then you think, okay, 
What about the fuel? Uh, we're actually working on a project. Look at prioritization of liquid fuels. Who should get what when there's not enough to go around or there's a complete stoppage in the supply? And one of the aspects of today, because of lean concepts and trying to wring every penny out of the budget, is we've become much more fragile because there, there aren't warehouses, as we saw, with personal protective equipment full of supplies and that. So we're just in time delivery is the other piece of that uh, to it. So you have to look where are the points of fragility uh, that you're functioning on. And a lot of times they aren't discovered until they're interrupted and that's not the time to do it. Uh, tabletop that, do planning, better understand how your systems function and you know figure what what those are so you have workarounds for so if i'm a community watching this and i'm thinking gee you know i'd like to learn a little more about this or get involved where would you refer them to for more information or some good resources well there isn't a lot out there uh on on this at all i i, I almost feel like a pioneer uh in this area because when funding comes down from the federal government and that does fund a lot of uh, aspects that goes to federal uh to state and local uh entities it's all channeled to individual jurisdictions and so there is no impetus to do this regional type of thinking there's one uh federal grant that's not available to everybody but it's a regional catastrophic preparedness grant program and the good news about that it could only be used for planning. You can't buy equipment with it. A lot of the Homeland Security funds went, I call it uh, toys for boys. Uh, all the cool digits and widgets and testers and response equipment, vehicles, boats, planes. Um, this only, is only used for planning. And so that planning function, it has to be done on a regional basis. Here, again, I'll use Puget Sound, is that's an eight county region. But there's other similar efforts that happened uh, across the United States being funded by that type uh, of grant. Or uh, another grant is Urban Area Securities Initiative that is multi-jurisdictional, but again, the money is not constrained to only be for planning. A lot of times it's spent on equipment. Yeah, which is important, but you're right. I mean, that planning, that piece, if you don't have that in place, you're gonna waste your money elsewhere. So, you know, that's, that is a critical part. And, I, you know, I've been doing this for over 30 years. I had an aha this year that, you know, the plan is only as good as the people who have participated in the plan. When you have this turnover in people and yeah. organizations, representatives, you may have a plan on a shelf, but it's not a functional plan because the people who put it together are no longer in place. So that's why planning has to be uh, continuous, you know, an old emergency management phrase, Eisenhower said this, was the plan is nothing, planning is everything. So you have to have a continual planning effort. It isn't a one and done at all because time passes very quickly. The personalities, people who participated, leave, transition, retire, what have you, and then no one even knows where to find a copy of the plan. That's what I observed earlier this year gave me that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if, before we wrap up, is there anything else you wanted to mention that perhaps I didn't ask about? Well, on regional, that the other piece of this, it is all about relationships and trust. And if you want to um, build trust, you have to start with first by having a relationship with individuals. You don't develop um, trust between organizations, it's between people. And if you start with, I think, sharing information, expecting nothing in return. And over time, that will bring parties together. And, you know, it's invitational. You can't compel someone else to want to work with you who you have no authority over or they don't see a self-interest in. So go where there's energy on regional issues. Um, don't beat your head against the wall trying to get somebody to work with you who's not interested. Uh, I, I had hair before I got into regional <laughs> business. So. It's not for the weak hearted. <laughs> well, that's a great way to end. So Eric, thank you for taking a few minutes today to speak with me and uh, wishing you all the best in your work at promoting regional disaster resilience. Right, well, thank you. I encourage everybody to look beyond, look at their maps or their jurisdiction and is it flat earth? There's nothing beyond it. it 
be sure you have other jurisdictions on that map that you're looking at. That's great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. Bye-bye.